Now tonight, look, of course, we've spoken about our relationship with food and the sustainability issues we're facing. But is the question, on top of all of this, is the question we really need to be asking, should we just stop eating meat? Is that actually the answer? Some of our panellists might disagree with this, but our next guest firmly believes we should. James Aspey is a vegan and animal rights activist. He's also a former candidate for the Animal Justice Party in New South Wales. He travels the country encouraging people to take up veganism. Some would say he's gone to extreme measures to get his message across. James Aspey took a vow of silence for 365 days to promote compassion to animals. Why did you do this? The reason I took the vow of silence was to raise awareness for the voiceless victims of this planet. The animals? The animals. The best justifications we've got are taste, habit, tradition and convenience. None of these reasons are a good enough justification to cause this unnecessary harm to animals. And James Aspey joins us now. Welcome to The Drum. Hi, thank you so much. Now, extreme measures we just spoke about. You didn't speak for a, for a year. You uh, got a 24-hour tattoo. Yeah. Um, you've, done, you've cycled for 5,000 kilometres from Darwin to Sydney, to all to promote veganism. And you've, you've gained mm. a very kind of high profile as a consequence of this. Why is this so important to you? I think the reason why this is so important is because it touches on all of the things that has already been spoken about. Food is integral to our health, it is integral to our sustainability on this planet, and it also plays a big part in ethics, especially the way that most people are eating in Australia, which is highly unethical, I would say, because most food that people buy today in Australia comes from a slaughterhouse where animals are brutally and violently killed in ways that we would never dream of putting any other human or even our, our dogs and companion animals through. Mm. Um, so it's, it's also a very desperate time, as we've spoken about as well, that we are faced with a serious climate crisis and something urgent needs to be done. So my reasons for those actions were simply to gain, a, uh, drum up awareness about the issues and um, what an individual can do. Right. Is it possible to eat meat ethically? If you ate roadkill, then I would say yes. The animal died accidentally, you could go and eat that meat, sure. But any time that you are killing an animal against their will, unless it's for survival, I believe it is unethical. And I think that because currently what we can do is get all the essential nutrients we need from a plant-based diet, then it makes any time that we will consume the product of someone getting, an animal getting their throat slit, I think, yes, that's highly unethical. One of the most unethical things that an everyday person, well, by far the most unethical thing that our everyday uh, population is contributing to. And what about, you know, animal products, for example? I mm. mean, you could, Matthew was milking his cow just this very morning. Yes. Um, so why couldn't you just be a vegetarian? Why does it have to be <clears throat> vegan? Thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. um, the reason is because all animal products inherently involve exploitation of animals. So for example, with the cows who are giving milk, the reason why they're giving milk is because they've been forcibly impregnated by a human. A human will shove their arm inside a cow's anus while she's caged and then she'll be injected with bull semen. Um, this is with, obviously without consent and against their will. Um, they will have a nine month pregnancy and give birth. The babies are taken from them often. The baby boys who are seen as waste products in the dairy industry are slaughtered or used as veal and then slaughtered soon later. And the females in the dairy industry then are milked every single day after going through the same process. And then after five to seven years, which is a short amount of what their natural lifespan would be, which would be about 20 years, they are also sent to the slaughterhouse and humanely slaughtered, which actually is not humane at all. It's just a word to make people feel better about their choices. What happens to these animals is they get bolt gunned in the head and then they're shackled upside down and they have their throat slashed open. Maybe if it's not that, they're put into a gas chamber um, to stun them, then they get their throat slashed open or it's electrocuted throat slashed open. So this is not, this is violence. This is unnecessary violence, unjustified violence. We don't need to consume meat, dairy or eggs. In the egg industry, for example, the male chicks are macerated because they're seen as a waste product. They're used for their eggs. They all end up at the slaughterhouse as well with the same fate. This doesn't need to happen to any of these beings. And mm. the reason why it doesn't need to happen is because now what we know is we can get all our essential nutrients we need from plants. We can eat delicious, amazing, satisfying, 
healthy food. And this is so much healthier because what we're talking about here is food without cholesterol with a far less amount of saturated fat. So we can get all the nutrients we need without the things that are causing our biggest killers, heart disease, cancers, mm -hmm. diabetes, obesity, osteoporosis. The only diet proven to reverse heart disease in the majority of patients is a whole foods plant-based diet. And I think why people are confused about how to be healthy, I'm sure it's part of many of the reasons you've mentioned, but I think a huge part of it is because people have no idea what to eat because we're told from these industries with a vested interest by our products. Why? Because meat has protein and dairy has calcium and eggs have omegas. And we're not taught that those same nutrients can easily be found in plants. So people okay. are eating yes. these foods that are unhealthy and causing violence and destroying the planet. And, um, you know, there's a better option available that people are just starting to become aware of now. Yes, and I'm going to come back to the question of, of the dietary um, components, and I'll, mm. I'll come back to you on this in a moment. But I want to talk about the question of the ethics mm. of eating meat. Matthew, do you want to, do, want to respond to that? What's your position on it? Yeah, I, what I find really interesting is um, most of the, pretty much everybody I've ever spoken in this space uh, doesn't grow food commercially if they're a vegan. Mm -hmm. and, and I think what happens when you grow food commercially, so, so, so the closest orchardist to me, uh, commercial orchard, apple orchard, he is in the process of shooting possums mm -hmm. to grow apples. So he looks a warm-blooded, furry mammal, marsupial, in the eye mm. and shoots it about once a day at the moment to grow mm -hmm. apples. And he does that because people want apples at a certain <coughs> price and he's lost about seven or $8,000 worth of apples to possums this year. The farm up the road grows organic strawberries. I know the organic farmer. I know the hunter who shoots the ducks for him, who mm -hmm. eat his crop. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there, there is no agriculture without impact on animals. Now, some of that might be accidental, like all the frogs and you know whatever snakes and spiders that get caught in the you know when they machine pick grapes and they make wine for you. But some of that is there are people shooting uh, birds who eat your pistachios. Mm -hmm. And so, so why is that different than rearing an animal on the farm and uh, using it for meat? Um, because all these things happen. Yes. And all these people who are yes. in this space who say, oh, it's violence and meat mm. is murder, mm. aren't growing food for Australians. Yes, well, first of all, animal products are inherently cruel, always. They all come from a slaughterhouse. Um, when it comes to the, the things that you've mentioned, for example, with the ducks. Um, I actually have gone through parts of your book and did read about the ducks you were talking about. And part of the reason why that is happening more is because they have actually changed the hunting laws. And now people are paying these farmers to be able to legally hunt on their land so that they it can- It's not the hunting laws, it's, it's crop protection permits. Okay, so even, yeah, with, yeah. even with crop protection, um, this is something that can evolve to become more ethical. And I guarantee if vegans were in charge of that and there was a more um, a more serious question about the ethics of consuming animals, then I believe we would most definitely find more ethical ways to ensure that we could continue consuming these crops without as much Okay, I just want to bring in Tess, Tess at this point <laughs> as well. Now, Tess, I'm going to assume that you're not a vegan from the, from, from no, the work that you no. do. How do you, uh, you know, like in your work with, with red meat, in your work with, with, with cattle, how do you respond to the concerns? And there are, there are growing concerns mm. and certainly more vocal concerns yeah. about the, the, the treatment of animals within these industries, within your industry. Um, I, I absolutely agree with what Matt just talked about. There is, and a, and a recent study said, um, if, if we would move to a vegan diet um, globally, then 25% more animals would actually die. That's part of the um, cropping, vegetable, all of that process would involve, it's just not as visible. They're dying during um, harvest or crop protection or whatever. Um, I think th the other thing that's interesting for me is um, uh, looking at the ethics of, I've seen my own cattle slaughtered. I've gone to an abattoir to view that. And I think as produ beef producers, we should do that. Mm -hmm. Living on a farm, living on the land, it, there, I'd, we have a, a strong connection with our animals. That doesn't, we still view them as a food source, but that doesn't mean they're treated badly. Um, I've, I often think back to um, Professor Temple Grandin, who I've met on a number of occasions, and she talks about living a good life. And 
the good life can be lived right up to the point of slaughter, and I, I disagree that with the the um, vision that um, James gave of what slaughter is like. My experience is absolutely not like that. The, the animal loses consciousness immediately. The living a good life right through the supply chain from birth to death mm. is possible in a well-managed animal welfare system. Is that the animal behaviourist that you've referred to that you set up the principles of your feedlots yes. on and so you yeah. have people to actively go around and check on the, the health and you have a separate yeah. hospital lot and you try to <clears throat> do you try to like create an environment where it's less stressful and I know you're going to want to speak on that James but before before we get to you on that I also want to um, ask Amanda for your view on the dietary concerns which we which we just touched on. Yeah. Well, as I said, we've got a really good understanding of the science now around what humans need to eat for maximum health benefits. So we know from the dietary guidelines that we've got seven different groups. You know, we've got ones that people are not going to argue about, fruit, vegetables and, and whole grain cereals. Um, and then the other groups are, are, are milk, um, uh, yogurt, cheese, and alternatives being soy or other plant-based options, but healthy plant-based options. I think sometimes what we're starting to see here is plant-based options that are actually very high in sugar and other, um, mm. you know, fake foods, if you, if you like. Um, the same with the meat group. It's lean meat, uh, poultry, fish, eggs, um, and plant-based alternatives there. So things like legumes and chickpeas. So it's really possible to eat well and have what is uh, perhaps more a flexitarian well, What approach. about vegan? Can you get yeah, everything you, you need you through can. a vegan diet? You like can get everything that we need to eat well through veganism. Vitamin B12 becomes a bit of a problem, but there's things you can do like not clean your teeth and perhaps some um, not clean your teeth. <laughs> Don't tell my kids that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's bacterial sources of B of B12 that oh my can goodness, be I used, not know. but it can be difficult, particularly for infants and for young children. So our <laughs> advice is, if people want to be vegan, make sure you get good quality scientific advice, not off. Google, not mm -hmm. of Dr. Google yes. about what you should the do. Actual here. experts like you <laughs> yes. about it. Now, um, I just want to go back to you, James, because I'm sure you want to weigh in. We've Thank had you. your dietary we, we just, you know, um, points um, agreed to there by yes. Amanda. Did you want to come back to the question about meat? Um, about let me, can I just, uh, first of all, just address the health thing again is that the um, one of the largest uh, academic dietitian and nutrition associations in the world is in consensus that, and this is over 100,000 scientists, nutrition, dietitians, that we can not only live and thrive on a plant-based diet and get all the nutrients we need, but we're likely to live longer, have less diseases, and it is likely to be more environmentally friendly. That's why the United Nations have said that the number one thing an individual can do to um, lower their carbon footprint is to consume a plant-based diet. Do you agree with those, Amanda? I think that there's a range of dietary patterns that are best suited to different environments. I think it's hard, particularly if you start bringing in things like uh, environmental concerns such as carbon put footprint or water use mm -hmm. or um, biodiversity. We need to look at the whole food system and I think there can be some unintended consequences if we don't look in a holistic manner. So yes, agree that it can be a beneficial pattern but my understanding of the evidence is it's not the only way of having a healthy diet and that we might need to be flexible mm. and you know maybe as a, this is the difference between population health where we look at shifting the mean of the population versus individual perspectives and we have to honour and respect what individuals want to do but as a population I agree that the evidence is we should be moving more towards healthy plant-based food. Yeah, I personally mm. think we should be honest and um, say that there's no amount of animal products necessary for a diet and because they cause so much harm and have unhealthy things in them that we can um, have plants get the same nutrients without the unhealthy things. I don't think it makes sense at all to uh, recommend we, uh, we do something that isn't healthy when there's a more healthy option available. Um, the same study that I was just talking about, and this is echoed around the world in um, Australia, UK, Canada, that it's not only healthy for 
our type of, you know, uh, a typical person, but it is healthy for breastfeeding mothers, for children, adolescents, for the elderly, for athletes, for everybody. Everybody can thrive. Every human being can thrive on a plant-based diet. So, can I th this, oh. yeah, but a third of the world's children are vitamin A deficient. Mm. You know, like we're talking 200 million stunted and wasted children around the world. We're talking, you know, uh, yes, they're really big problems that, that would right. be alleviated with small amounts of meat to, to the most mm -hmm. vulnerable on, in, the, in the world. So this, yeah, you can say, yeah, vegan diet. Most people in the world aren't debating whether they, they're just talking food. They're not yeah, talking whether it's got true. plants yeah. or animals in it. But I just want to bring in Marianne there because we haven't heard from you about a vegan <laughs> diet. And I do know that you were approached by a fast food outlet to help them develop a meatless burger. Uh, yes, it was a year ago, uh, basically uh, Jack Cohen came and talked to CSRO uh, team about developing a plant-based meat patty and basically what we did was uh, to work with uh, all the technologies around us and a new company was formed, V2 Foods, and what we have done is actually made a vegan, uh, not a vegan, a vegetarian or plant-based meat patty, which is now sold as the Rebel Burger uh, through uh, Hungry Jacks. Is it good? And it's just, is it nutritious? Uh, basically, what we're doing is actually just using, um, um, I guess, proteins from, from plants and cooking it in a certain way so that we actually get the fibers because I'm more a texture person so it's how do you actually align the, the fibers in uh, the plant to have that so part of it was texture part of it was actually how do we get the flavors and we also have flavor chemists around who actually say if we put some of the precursors which are necessary to actually create this lovely flavor we can do that. So yes, uh, we had some people are saying. I, I guess the jury's out, but most most of the information I've got is that you know it tastes pretty good. But I think you have to taste it for yourself and make that judgment. Mm. Mm. So Julia, yes, just just on the almost fake. out of time. Mm. So okay, on the fake right? meat thing, I just wanted to really quickly. For a hundred years, we spent you know science. My dad was a research chemist. I, I did a science degree. Mm. You know, scientists have been working on something for a hundred years, trying to replicate an animal product. Um, they spent you know, hundreds of millions of dollars on it and they come up with a substitute for butter called margarine. And nobody who's had butter thinks margarine is an acceptable flavour <laughs> Okay, now I've got, got 15 <laughs> seconds. Jack, it's yours to end um, the show. The vegan meats are almost identical. So are the vegan ice creams and the vegan butters. They've come a long way even in the last five years. Um, what you said about humanely slaughtering animals, even if they had a good life, it's not okay to kill somebody against their will even if they had a nice life first. What you also said about about Five if seconds. we all went vegan, the, that we'd kill more animals is just insane and I'd love to elaborate but we don't have time. But that is all we have the time. But don't we always want to elaborate more? What, what a great panel it was tonight. Thanks so much for everyone. Amanda Lee, Tess Herbert, Matthew Evans, Marianne Augustine and to our guest James Aspie. Enjoy your dinner tonight. Have an excellent weekend. See you next week.